Welcome to a Legendarium special about Yemelyan Pugachev's Rebellion, also called the Russian Peasants' War of 1773. In this episode, we will talk about how an illiterate Don Cossack came close to overthrowing Empress Catherine the Great. Tsarist Russia operated under a system called serfdom, at a time when most of Europe moved away from feudalism and embraced commercial agriculture, Russian peasants remained subservient. Not merely bound to the land, they held the legal status of property to their boyar owners. In some cases, boyars even traded serfs for greyhound dogs or purebred horses. On top of that, the boyars started to embrace western fashions, food, music, and concert halls, which meant ever greater burdens placed on the serfs. And if any of those serfs displeased those who called themselves their owners, the boyars answered their complaints with the knout, a leather whip which sliced half an inch deep into the flesh with each stroke. Boyars sometimes ordered their men to whip the peasants until the flesh fell from their bones. On top of that, serfs had an obligation to serve in the army of a state which repressed them. Whenever Tsarist officers arrived to conscript serfs, their families and communities held a wake for them, as if they died, for they would likely never return. One such illiterate Don Cossack recruit, Yemelyan Pugachev, fought in the Russian army during the final battles of the Seven Years' War. He later served in Russia's 1764 campaign in Poland and then the Russo-Turkish War, which started in 1768. Following the siege and conquest of Bendery in 1770, Pugachev returned home as an invalid. Three years after his recovery, he wandered, especially among the settlements of the Skopsi. The Skopsi considered sex to be the source of all sin, and their men practiced ritual castration in which they sliced off their testicles and cauterized the wound with a hot iron. They also fervently rejected materialism, especially as practiced by the boyar classes. From them, Pugachev learned of a short-lived rebellion against the boyars, which ended in brutal suppression, one of several such uprisings to arise and be crushed during Catherine's reign. Pugachev then traveled back home to the Cossack borderlands, escaping the authorities several times. At the time, the skilled and fearsome Cossacks enjoyed a special status in Tsarist Russia because of their military service. However, Catherine's government began revoking some of their traditional rights to self-government in order to bring the empire more firmly under her control. At a meeting of Cossack village chiefs in the steppes east of the Volga River, Pugachev claimed to be Emperor Peter III, murdered ten years ago by his wife, now Empress Catherine the great. Pugachev claimed that as Emperor Peter III, he was about to order the abolition of serfdom and turn the land over to those who worked it before his evil wife thwarted him and drove him from the palace. This fanciful and fantastic story proved very popular with horn-handed sons of toil who deeply resented what Catherine's government did to them. Pugachev's followers included not only the Yike Cossacks, but serf laborers in the mines that dotted the Ural Mountains, peasant laborers, and even priests. The rebellion also crossed ethnic lines, including Bashkirs, Tartars, and other nationalities within Russia. Catherine the Great sought to suppress their traditional languages in favor of making them speak Russian, a process called Russification. Unsurprisingly, this only turned them into willingness recruits for the Pugachev army. Starting in September 1773, the Pugachev rebellion rapidly spread from central Russia to Siberia. Over one million people joined the uprising against the Tsar, with Pugachev personally leading a hundred thousand men. 
Planning to ultimately depose Catherine, Pugachev stormed and laid siege to Orenburg, an important commercial and industrial hub of the Ural Mountains during the fall of 1773. While Pugachev called for land redistribution, his 1773 proclamation also called for his followers to catch, execute, and hang any nobleman who opposed him. Pugachev's followers responded to the call with enthusiasm. In one region, peasant rebels murdered nearly one in five of all resident noblemen. The rebels dealt with their highborn victims brutally. When they captured the stronghold of Tatishskaya, they skinned the commander alive, stabbed his wife to death, and then raped and murdered his daughter. Others went to a court hastily set up by Pugachev to try the nobles for treason and then have them hung. Local landowners, fearing for their lives, fled to Moscow. Pugachev himself boasted that he would march on Moscow next, forcing the authorities to fortify the city with cannons. Empress Catherine recognized the seriousness of the situation and sent an army commanded by General Alexander Suvorov against Pugachev in January 1774. To free up troops, Catherine sought a quick end to the ongoing war against the Ottoman Turks, which Pugachev himself fought in until a few years ago. During the spring of 1774, Suvorov defeated Pugachev at the village of Tatishkevo, west of Orenburg, but Pugachev proceeded to Kazan and burned the city to ashes during July 1774. Pugachev suffered a second defeat several days later, but he hastily crossed the Volga River. No matter how many defeats he suffered, Pugachev always found a steady stream of willing recruits to join his army. With them, he won another victory by capturing Saratov in August 1774 and then besieged Saritsyn, a city now called Volgograd. There, Alexander Suvorov finally defeated Pugachev on September 3, 1774. The regime's vengeance proved cruel beyond words. The authorities used red-hot brands to burn the word thief into the foreheads of prisoners before marching them to prison camps in Siberia. The less fortunate would be suspended by metal hooks pushed through their ribs and then they were left to die. Others would be hung from gallows nailed to rafts which floated down the Volga as a warning to others. Pugachev escaped yet again only to be betrayed by a group of his own Yayi Cossacks. General Alexander Suvorov personally escorted Pugachev, locked in a wooden cage, to Moscow. There, the court sentenced Pugachev to death by beheading. Before the axe came down, Pugachev knelt and asked the people for forgiveness for any sins he committed during his life. The authorities then tried to erase his name from history, just as they removed his head from his body. They burned down his family house and renamed his home village. Even the river where the rebellion started was changed from the Yayik to the Ural River. Nonetheless, Yemelyan Pugachev's rebellion, later called the Russian Peasants' War, challenged the Russian Empire more than any event since the Time of Troubles. The ghost of Pugachev haunted Imperial Russia until its demise in 1917. When Vladimir Lenin's Communist Party seized the country that year, many peasants still cherished the memory of Pugachev. Many believed that any strange sight served as an omen for Pugachev's return, and Russian literary great Alexander Pushkin became so enamored with Pugachev's legacy that he devoted two whole books to him. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.